While retirement is generally seen as a time of relaxation and self-focus, God calls us to love, serve, and help others for a lifetime. He has been preparing us for this retirement season literally our entire lives. In retirement, countless Christians enter a state of spiritual dormancy, not knowing how they are called to have an impact for God's kingdom. The Retirement Reformation seeks to encourage and empower the 50 million Christians approaching or in retirement to embrace the calling God has been preparing in them. When the world says it's time to stop, you can begin to have your greatest impact. Welcome to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation, where our goal is to journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Hey, reaching out to the 50 million Christ followers who are in retirement or already in retirement, you've tuned into I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. I'm your host, Jim Brangenberg, and today, joined by the other Brangenberg, Mrs. Brangenberg's here, Martha Brangenberg's joined us, and of course, the founder of the Retirement Reformation, Bruce Brinesma, along with his beautiful bride of 59 and a half years, Judy Brinesma. Thank you guys all for joining us today as we have a conversation about the impact of culture on our perspective on retirement, and we would invite you, check us out online, retirementreformation.org, retirementreformation.org, or on Facebook, just check out Retirement Reformation. And of course, Bruce, as Bruce is already warming up, we want everybody to check out our app in the App Store, right? We want people to download the app from the App Store. Absolutely. If you do that, it will be with you all the time when you're riding the bus, when you're waiting for the bus, or you're just sitting at home thinking about, you know, I ought to check out that Retirement Reformation, see what it has to say today and you go to the app and you've got it right there. And even if you're not riding a bus, maybe you're sitting in your back porch having a cup of coffee as you get up in the morning, check out the Retirement Reformation app on all of the app. Well, is it on, did you get it on the Google App Store yet or is it only it's, in the Apple App Store? It's on the Google App Store So also. you got Google, on Google Play Music, you can get it on the App Store or Google Apps. I don't even have, I don't have an Android. I have no idea how you do it, but if you've got one, you know sorry about that. <laughs> okay, but if you got an Apple, it's easy to go to the App Store. All right. Listen, the concept and reality uh, in the United States of retirement is a rare, it, it's, it's just a, it's a social construct that's kind of messed up. And we're going to talk about that today and get the perspective on what does it look like? How do we start developing a biblical perspective on retirement instead of the way the Americans look at retirement? Because the perspective we have on the American dream of retirement is a little twisted. So I want to start off with this. Bruce, why don't you start off and then we'll all run, jump into this. What does the American culture say about retirement, Bruce? The American culture is so insidious as it speaks about retirement because it does it in so many ways, but the message is the same no matter how it comes at you. And so that, that message is simply that it is time to focus on yourself. There are options available to you, but all the options are ones that satisfy who you are and the part that's really sad is that, is that there is little meaning involved, but there is lots of pleasure. Mm. And so one of the ways that I describe the American culture is uh, talking about retirement is that's pretty much all downhill, uh, both mentally and physically, and then you die. And, and the goal is to be able to jam as much leisure as you can into that intervening period. Right. Now, it's not to say that leisure doesn't have value, but it doesn't have meaning. So let's get some, we know often, Bruce, it's you and I on the show, we don't get a, a lot of times get a female perspective in this. So let's we talk don't. with Judy first and then Martha. Judy, when you, growing up, your perspective on retirement and, and what the American culture says about retirement, what did you think you were going to anticipate or you were going to experience once you got to 65 and retired? Well, first of all, I didn't think about it too much because I had an active life and I wanted to have a life that was filled with meaning, you know, while I had the energy. And so I didn't really think about that. Uh, but it is, it is a lot and it can be a long time. Sure. And uh, I don't think this, that our culture has caught up with that fact yet. I still think, you know, you've got these few years of retirement. Uh, and so, have fun, enjoy yourselves for the first time, and 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 uh, be thankful for what you could leave behind because now you have freedom. But they don't 
we don't know how to fill that freedom right. and we don't know we we don't realize how long a period it can be yeah often they're 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 celebrating what they're leaving not mm -hmm. what they're going to Absolutely. so martha you know we're not retired yet we're not of retirement age yet, although we do get discounts now on coffee some places <laughs> even though we don't drink coffee what what, <laughs> what 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 do you think the american culture is saying today for those of us that are anticipating retirement what, what's it saying to you I think that there's a whole lot of focus on what we're going to go do or, or that next step. And, um, you know, being living in Florida, we see a lot of people coming here for this escape or this whatever that might be. And um, so their focus is really just seems on like, OK, I'm going to make money so that I can play, that I can have this house, that I can do these things I've always wanted to do and haven't taken the time to do. And that's it. So do you think the perspective, Martha, is different for women? The American perspective of retirement is different for women than it is for men? Ooh, that's a really good question because we're dealing with now like retirees that are a different generation than they were, um, you know, even maybe 10 or 15 years ago. So um, I think there's more women that are retiring from careers um, at the same time that right. their husbands are, or, you know, kind of maybe they one they bookend each other by a couple of years or something like that. So I think women are looking at it differently because instead of it being, what is my husband doing? It's, you know, what am I doing with my career and how am I going to spend this next season of life? And Judy, what about for you? Okay. You're in a, a little different generation than Martha and I. What is the perspective? Does, does life really change for a woman who quote unquote retires? Uh, then, I uh, mean, is there a different anticipation? Well, I'm definitely a different uh, generation in that growing up, uh, most of my friends did not have outside jobs. Right. I mean, and uh, we were housewives and we were women so that we were naturally more sociable. I mean, I think women on the whole are more sociable. That's why God created you. And um, so I have not experienced... Um, uh, as difficult a time uh, going into retirement because, uh, however, I do notice that most of it is social clubs, you know, and mm. uh, things, if you play bridge, boy, you have lots of bridge clubs because that's what people our age know how to do. If you, uh, you know, uh, book clubs, that's another big thing. And those things are fun fun and they're also somewhat meaningful so i think it's a lot easier for, at least for women of my age yes. judy i want to go i want to interrupt this and i want to remind you because you spent you started you became a flight attendant at american airlines at age 58 right and you worked as a flight attendant till age 68 and you really weren't ready to retire yet because of our travel schedules and everything else we decided that was the best thing to do I think you had a really difficult time with that retirement. Could you reflect on that a little bit? That is so far from uh, social clubs and anything else. Uh, and you really struggled with that. At least that was my perception. Well, so you're talk right. about that. You're right. Uh, I did skip over that. I had a period of time that lasted at least two years where I didn't feel useful. And I would ask Bruce, you know, what I could do for him. And I was looking for useful, quote unquote, things mm -hmm. I could do. And I did some good things. I started a Bible study at our church for women, and uh, which is still going strong. And uh, but I did have that internal struggle that I wasn't being useful. Mm -hmm. And how did that translate? Well, I wasn't bringing in money. That was one thing. I, you know, I that's all I can say. I didn't feel useful. So yeah. you're right. I had forgotten that. Well, and it's, it's great that your husband was here just to smack you upside oh, the head and remind you about that pain and suffering. I can always count you on You count on that. Bruce to bring the pain back. <laughs> you know, it, it is important to note, you know, I, I think for a lot of women who were stay-at-home moms and wives, that when you got to retirement years, their lives didn't change because they're still stay-at-home moms and wives and doing the cooking and the cleaning and that kind of stuff. 
But Martha, as you said, a lot, and, and Judy, a lot of your friends didn't have careers, but Martha, a lot of your friends do have careers, and I think it's a little different. And we'll dig into that a little bit deeper as we go into these next four shows. Bruce, when we come back, I really want you to talk about, you wanted to talk about what did Solomon have to say about retirement and what he figured out? You're listening to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. Check us out online, retirementreformation.org. We'll be right back. The Retirement Reformation wants to come alongside you as you navigate in each stage of your retirement. Our online resources include our blog, our downloadable books, and life planning studies, as well as membership and coaching options. Go to retirementreformation.org and use these resources to begin the transformation of your retirement. Journey from retirement to reformation. So you can say, I retire for him. That's retirementreformation.org. Now, back to the show. Hey, welcome back to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. I'm Jim Brangenberg, your co-host of I Retire For Him. We're sitting down today with Bob Lambert from Faith Marketplace Radio. Check him out online, faithmarketplace.com, faithmarketplace.com. Bob Lambert, you and I have been friends for a lot of years. Did a lot of radio together. Had a lot of fun. You had a plan for your retirement. What did that look like? You've been running Samurai Samurai Consulting, right? Samurai Business Group, yeah. Samurai Business Group, excuse me. You had a plan for Samurai Business Group and Bob Lambert's retirement. What was that plan? Well, (laughs) Uh, you know, God had a different plan, Jim. <laughs> I know, but what was what you know, was Bob's uh, plan first? Just to refresh it, you know, I uh, I'm in my 74th year, and I had um, actually along the way there, uh, both my former partner, which was is deceased, unfortunately, I lost my partner four years ago to cancer, and we our plan was really to exit out of that gracefully within a year or two, and uh, we were on that glide path, and then he passed away. And then it was like, okay, wow. Um, And there was some, uh, obviously some other things that happened along the way that I got a few surprises. So uh, I wasn't in in, in position to retire. And frankly, I never really thought about physically retiring anyway. I don't play golf. Uh, I do have some hobbies and interests, but it was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel good. I'm, I'm doing things right, living right. And uh, as you know, I'm spinning about three plates because not only have that, I got my own podcast, you know, which i I fully believe that God has got me working on that till he doesn't have me anymore working on it. So that was something we also, and then lastly, uh, on a board that I'm very passionate about for uh, helping former, formerly incarcerated get jobs and also youth uh, to keep them out of trouble. And so those things I saw is- That's all you got going on? Well, I, I saw Samurai being something that I would eventually, you know, get out of and, and get out alive, hopefully, and then be able to do that. Well, that plan has gotten extended. And so that's where we're going at. The other thing I'd share with you that had a really big impact on me uh, a number of years ago was, of course, uh, uh, you know, the uh, halftime book and Bob Buford. And I, I started thinking about that really seriously and saying, yeah, what am I really passionate about? What am I going to take after I want to kind of hold, hang up the spurs on the, on the main business I've been doing for over 20 years? And what does that look like? <clears throat> and God presented me with a couple of different opportunities. And I said, this is what it looks like. You know, that's what I'm doing. So um, I'm also blessed with my beautiful bride, you know, is uh, still right mid-career right now because she's uh, in her late 50s. So, you know, that that also has a bit of an implication here as to what's going to go on for us. And you don't retiring. get to sit down and relax because she's still working. All right. But when, <laughs> yeah. when you when you were growing up. And you're thinking, yeah. when I retire, this is what I'm going to do. I, you know, what was that picture? Well, that picture was something like, I'm going to have a place up in the Northwest. And I'm going to have a place down the South somewhere so I can summer in the North and winter in the, in the South, you know. <laughs> and, and what point in time did Jesus intersect your life? Well, it, yeah, my story goes back. I only came to the Lord 21 years ago. Okay. So, you know, I was in the Dutch for 36 years. So, frankly... You know, it was all about building wealth and building all these things. And I had a couple left-hand turns. You know, I, I found and co-founded four companies. And, uh, you know, unashamedly, you know, and I made some bad choices and some things I did, both financially and otherwise. And so that has also had an effect on all of it. But, you know, as I've got more mature my Christianity, it's like I've got plenty of stuff. And I'm trying to get rid of stuff now. So I think God has blessed me in a way that just says, you know something, <clears throat> be content. And that's what I, that was my big word uh, two years ago, contentment. 
you know, and stop striving for more worldly stuff and just really start focusing on what God wants and, you know, step back because he laughs at you when you tell him his plans, you know, so. Yes, he does. I, and I love that. I love that he does that. And what's what's cool, though, Bob, is that, okay, so you didn't get to sell your business like you thought you were going to get to sell your business. Right. You're still working the Samurai Business Group, and you're also yeah. working Faith Marketplace Radio and this other nonprofit yeah. work. Talk to me about what do you what do you see those next five years looking like? As you know, your faith is you know growing stronger. God's right. not letting you stop what you're doing. What do you think? What do you think God's got in store? Well, uh, you know, again, I'm leaving it up to him, but <clears throat> we're working towards uh, again uh, finding a successor for the business or a company who would like to buy it out. And I, you know, I, I don't have big grandiose plans about this because my type of business is first of all, it's hard to get an evaluation on, and then being able to get, I've got plenty of IP. And as I tell people, I got plenty of content, but that, and, you know, 50 cents might give you a cup of coffee. Not cup so, 50 cents, uh, we're working on putting the wheels on. The, yeah, yeah. We're, we're taking, putting on you know, reoccurring revenue, building it up so that it has a, more of a, a value to it. And also I can get out of it some of it that I put into it. Um, and then along that way, so hopefully the plan was, that, you know, what I'm praying on is in the next two years, that's going to manifest itself. So I'll be in my 50, 50 76 year. And if God grants me the good health that he has so far, then uh, that's fine. I'll make that transition out. Uh, and then really devote a little bit more time to Faith Marketplace and some of those endeavors that I just don't have the time for to do as much of it as I'd like to do. So yeah. that, I think there'll be a shift there. Um, and also, you know, um, continue my networking. I mean, you know, networking Christians and networking people together is just, I think God has blessed me very much with a gift to do that, like you. You know, so I, I get a big excitement out of that and just the thrill of seeing people come to life and things happening for them that they didn't ever think possible. Um, so, yeah. You mentioned your uh, nonprofit work that you're that you're working. Just <laughs> explain what you're doing there. The nonprofit work is I got called into that about uh, going on three years ago. And that is an organization called Legacy Reentry Foundation up here in northern Illinois. Uh, formed by a for, uh, formed by a former felon, it's a for profit or not for profit uh, Christian based company, faith based legacy company. legacy reentry reentry foundation. Okay, and right. the we got three legs to that stool. Number one is to help formerly incarcerated get back out and get their get their dignity back and give them employment. Okay, uh, number two is to really do youth prevention, and so we've really been blessed by getting a couple major grants from the state and also some generous generous donors to donate to that. And we've got just a full-blown youth program now. We just moved into a new facility. That was another grant, took and covered all the cost of that. So I just see nothing but, you know, trajectory going up. And last but not least, what you're going to be firing up when everything settles down is a uh, a, uh, a food or a uh, clothing uh, facility. We had it before COVID, and now we're coming back with it again. And that basically is open up to anybody in the community, but particularly formerly incarcerated, their families, helping them, you know, get clothed, particularly when they want to go out for job interviews and that kind of thing. Part of the youth program also, what we got connected with a program called um, Youth uh, uh, Entrepreneurs for Youth is uh, also not only taking that into the youth community, but also to the former incarcerated if they have an idea or something they want to do. I think probably one of the other big things I want to say, Jim, is that I'd really love to see us start a micro loan fund so that we could actually do more than just helping them and educating them as to being entrepreneurs, but actually give them a leg up financially to sure. get something started. You know, you live in the Windy City, Chicago, named for its politics and its actual natural weather. Right. There's a lot of guys like you out there working who have all kinds of talent, all kinds of experience, all kinds of wisdom. And they've been told as Christ followers, it's okay to just retire and check out and go buy that place in Florida or Arizona or Texas to get away during the wintertime. Because your winters, frankly, they're just terrible in Chicago. They're worse than Minneapolis where I grew up. Speak to those people listening today about their retirement and, and the impact they can make with those years remaining on their clock. Yeah, I, you know, I, I can't encourage people enough. And I think the boomer generation in general is one that, you know, is not about to hang up their spurs. First of all, over 33% uh, of them are going to have to try to survive on uh, Social Security. And that that's not, you know, and the average Social Security check is just barely over, uh, you know, five figures. And so that's, that's they're going to have to continue working. Another 60% have responded that they're going to have to work past official retirement. And, you know, folks have got a lot of gas left. And, you know, as Bob Buford's book said, and we've done some research on that, if you don't have some 
purpose in your life, when you're looking to, you know, hang it up or whatever it is, um, what I saw the statistics, you're going to be dead in five years. So it's really about purpose. You know, what is that purpose and what has God, you know, provided to you for purpose? And there's a lot of stuff we can do out there in, in our silver years, as I say, you know, our youth. <laughs> well, for you, <laughs> it's silver say, years. For me, it's the bald years. Yeah, giving back, you know, and, and using the, what God has given us is wisdom, you know, and being able to give that back in a way that is meaningful and also God honoring. So I encourage, you know, and, and you, it's a great subject you bring it up, Jim, because I've spoken to a lot of folks in my age category, and they're not about to hang up their spurs. They are getting involved in not for profits. They are getting involved in in um, charitable work and things that they can do that they feel is giving back, and also it's giving them some fulfillment. You know, they right. see purpose in that. Um, I've also got people in my age category. They're working part time jobs. You know, and just to keep busy. Oh, and you what know? a great ministry opportunity! Working those part time jobs, oh, yeah, back in there, oh, yeah. and you can actually mentor some of the next generations. I love that idea. Bob yeah. Lambert, we're out of time. Check Bob okay. out on, online at faithmarketplace.com. And so many other places. Bob Lambert, thanks for being on I Retire For Him today. You bet. Thanks, Jimmy. We'll be right back with more on I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the retirement reformation. It's time we stop looking at our retirement years as 30 years of vacation, leisure, and self-gratification. Let's take control of our retirement life plan and build meaning, purpose, and intentionality into it. Go to retirementreformation.org and click on the word manifesto. We invite you to make a retirement declaration to yourself and to God. Sign the manifesto and start changing the way you think about retirement. Retirementreformation.org. Click on manifesto. Journey from retirement to reformation. So you can say, I retire for him. Now let's get back to the show. Hey, welcome back to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. As we're talking about just our perspective on the culture's impact, really, what is culture anyway? And what's it, how does, how does, what does Ecclesiastes have to say about culture? I mean, Bruce, I said, I wanted to ask you this question. You said, let's, let's hit Ecclesiastes in this episode. And what is Solomon having to say about retirement? And I don't know that Solomon talked about retirement, but he had a lot of perspective on life, didn't he? He certainly did. Matter of fact, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes was, in reading that for the first time on an airplane uh, when I was 30 years old, was one of the major spiritual changing points in my life. Because as I, as I read about wisdom for the first time and really started to come to grips with, with what wisdom is available to us as we navigate through our lives, as we navigate uh, amongst all of the cultural issues that, that impinge upon us and that that, that actually guide the way we think and what we do. And so when I read Ecclesiastes, I first went back and said, well, what is wisdom? Mm -hmm. And Solomon said wisdom started with being in awe of God. He talked about the fear of God, but he right. really meant in awe of God. That there was that relationship was the first spot. And then at the end of his life, he wrote that book of Ecclesiastes, and everybody re remembers the words meaningless that come out of that. However, he had buried in there all kinds of wisdom and meaning that related to not only the culture of his time, but I think they relate to the culture of our time, and we could spend an hour just in that conversation. But let me just highlight a couple of those. Okay. First of all, in the third chapter is, is that famous soliloquy that he talks about there is a time for everything, mm -hmm. a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot and so on and so on and so forth. So that idea of unique times in our lives and how we respond to the cultural influences is absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to navigate our way through those times is, is what comes from God's wisdom. And so uh, there is a time for everything. One of the things that I remember sitting on that airplane and reading through that book for the first time and, and realizing that he was the richest guy in the world, he was the smartest guy in the world, he was one of the most powerful guys in the world, and so he tried it all. Tried, tried it all to, to answer the question of what will give me pleasure. And isn't that what we're doing in our culture today? 
We're working for 60, 65, maybe 70 years. And the reason why we're working is to be able to enter into a time when I will receive pleasure. Well, if we take the wisdom of Solomon and he tried it all. And he had the money to try it out more than any guy that's even living today. Not only he had the money, but he also had the time. Right. And the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. And so whether in fact we're talking about Solomon's time or our time, I think the, the nature of man is very similar. And so what he found out, just like we are finding out now, and Judy mentioned in our last segment that, that retirement can be a long time, and let's just call it 30 years, that 30 years of doing meaningless things are not going to bring you joy, mm -hmm. are not going to add meaning to your life. And so that's what Solomon figured out, that in fact, when it's all focused on you, what you're going to find is disappointment. So let's talk about what we should be pursuing in retirement, because I think, you know, there's, um, you know, we, we always joke on, I work for him, uh, our podcast that, you know, nobody gets their deathbed and says, I just wish I'd worked one more day, or I wish I'd had one more meeting. No, they always say, I wish I'd have spent more time with family. So I think one of those things, from my perspective, the things that bring meaning to retirement is that time with family, because you never can get enough time with your family. Well, I think the, the issue is, is what is our focus? If my focus is on me, okay, that's going to be meaningless. If my focus turns outward, I'm going to find meaning, and one of the places to find meaning is in relationship with our family. That is absolutely accurate. Also, when our, our culture now points us in the direction that work is drudgery and something that I have to do. Mm -hmm. May I notice that playing golf is work. You sweat, you walk, you pull your clubs or you drive your cart. Or you throw your clubs if you're like you me. Or you throw your clubs, <laughs> you, you, you look for your ball. So there is going to be work in whatever we do. The question okay. is, what's the focus? But the, the question work? on the table, though, is Bruce. Okay, so we figured out that Solomon tried everything. Maybe he didn't try golf, but he tried everything, and he found it meaningless. What are some things that we should be pursuing, Judy Brinesma, that will bring us meaning? Well, uh, well, what are well? Uh, I believe finding something to do that isn't frivolous and. Uh, Bruce and I have had to work that out together. Uh, he has me help him with things that he is doing in his work sometime. He's very conscious. Uh, we are a team. Now, that doesn't just happen. Right. Uh, so I don't want to get into marriage <laughs> relationships here, but you always have to work with other people. And in our case, we have to work together to make our lives meaningful. One thing that we both love to do is travel. However, Bruce still works full time and uh, you can't do it at the drop of the hat. You have to fall, you have to plan for it. Right. So, um, you know, I the uh, way it works out is I say, I'd like to go here and he says, oh, that's a good idea. Well, when can we do it? And so uh, he tells me when he can do it and he knows that it's his responsibility to honor that, to not, mm. when he gets there, say, well, I really can't do, you know, he, he has to work toward that. Then I make the plans and, so, and uh, that's uh, just how we do it. But we have, it's meaningful for us and something to look forward to. So it, it, it lightens our life. You, you, mentioned, <laughs> you mentioned marriage there for a second. Are you still having to work at your marriage after 59 and a half years? Duh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right? <laughs> of From course. the words of Judy. <laughs> it is. Martha, what do you, what do you, what kind of things do you, I mean, we're not in retirement yet, yet we've got parents that are retired and we've got good friends that are retired. What, what are some of the things that we're seeing them pursue that brings meaning to their lives? Well, you know, I was thinking about this and we tend to give golfers a hard time. We you do. Know, because it is such a great just example, you know, of how people spend their time. But I truly believe that you can use use that situation and say, okay, what are you going to do when you're in a foursome and you're matched up with somebody and you're riding in the cart between holes? Intentional conversation. Right. Like having which you can that, do anywhere. Which you can do in <clears throat> every situation. But I just want to, you know, point out the golfers because we don't, we give them so a I hard time. So I have to time. apologize to the golfers. You have to apologize <laughs> Sorry, to Dad. those golfers. 
because you can be intentional. You know, I think that our everyday life, the things that we encounter, the people that we encounter, looking at that with a different focus, instead of just saying, I'm going to travel to X, Y, and Z. Okay, when we go there, let's be purposeful in thank, you know, being kind to our servers and being and sh- be in the light of Jesus, praying, offering, offering to pray for them, the simple things right. in life, but even taking it further and maybe mentoring the people you golf with, you know, find a younger person to bring along mm-hmm. and walk out life with them, right? It's being one, you know, one step ahead of somebody that you can walk in that journey together. Bruce, we're out of time, but I want I know that you wanted, you had another verse or a set of verses from Ecclesiastes that you want to make sure that we highlighted from Solomon because he kind of summarized in chapter 12 in Ecclesiastes how he was feeling about everything, about his pursuits of, of seeking meaning. Well, one of the things that impressed me about the book so much was, again, this was in his, his old age as he reflected back. Mm-hmm. And, and now it would be like somebody, somebody in his 85 or 90 or 95 reflecting back. And the bottom line conclusion that he says in in chapter 12 is fear God or be in awe of God, be connected to God, have a relationship with God and keep his commandments. Right. Picking up on what Martha said, being other directed, not inwardly directed. That's what he concluded was the key to happiness, to fulfillment and to have meaning. How can Retirement Reformation help us get there? When we come to the point of going, aha, there is more. There is something I can do, but I don't know what it is. That's where you can lock into the Retirement Reformation, lock into one of your your guys' new books uh, on I Retire for Him, and be able to find a process that will allow each one of us to be able to go through and see how God has prepared us Find a need and fill it. Find a hurt and heal it. Right. Find someone who has a need that you can step into and that you can mentor. That's the direction that we need to go. And the Retirement Reformation will provide the process mm. for you to work through that and come to your own conclusion that will bring you meaning and purpose. And we really want to invite you to join us out there on retirementreformation.org. It is a place full of resources that can absolutely transform your life. Make sure you take time. Go to retirementreformation.org, retirementreformation.org. So you've been listening to I Retire Friend, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. We're just two guys with our two wives today. Just taking a journey from retirement to reformation because we ultimately want to say together, I I retire retire for for him. him. Thanks for listening to I Retire for Him with your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg and Retirement Reformation founder, Bruce Brinesma. I Retire for Him is the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation. Most Christians tend to follow the world's pattern of rest and self-pampering during retirement. However, in your retirement, you can be focused on God's unique call to love, serve, and help others. This can be your best season of life if you take advantage of a life's worth of knowledge and experience and combine it with a greater freedom of time and money and invest it all in the generations both preceding and following you. The Retirement Reformation is encouraging Christians to find and follow God's call in all seasons and aspects of life especially in retirement. Take time to sign the manifesto at retirementreformation.org and explore the wealth of resources available on our site. Join this movement of God and journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Go to retirementreformation.org.